So happy Mother's Day. There's two persons in the room that I would be remiss not to acknowledge before we, before we dive in. Um, first, of course, happy Mother's Day to my mom. Mom, happy Mother's Day, and I'm very excited that you're here this morning. Last year, she chose um, to be with my older brother up in the Portland area on Mother's Day. And to her credit, though, I probably didn't tell her I was speaking. If you ask my family, I just, I don't tell them anything. I either just assume they know or that it doesn't matter. And so um, they always joke, I'm going to be on my deathbed and not tell anybody that I was sick. And so that's, pro it probably will happen that way. You'll have to tell me because I won't be here. And so, but happy Mother's Day, Mom. Um, and I will not be looking at you during this morning because my mom, I don't know if, have any of you met my mom, Jackie Brown? So her heart is so big and so full, it often overflows through her eyes. And, um, and she is one of those who does not hold back, uh, whereas I am like, oh, what is this? This needs to stop. She just lets it flow, and it's a beautiful thing. And so for those reasons, I will not be looking at you this morning. But know that as I was writing this, as God started to speak to me about this message back in Easter, um, the message that I get to share today is for you as well in this season of life that you are in as, as a mother and as a beautiful woman of God. Oh, it's starting already. Okay, I'm not looking over there anymore. <laughs> the other persons that I wanted to acknowledge this morning, I appreciate that Pastor Jason um, already gave um, a pause for you in this room, and I appreciate the, the woman of God that came up to him to um, kind of nudge in that direction, and I won't look at her either because I saw who that was. Um, but I just wanted to say um, there are many of you here this morning that it took an exceptional amount of bravery to be here on this day. And you could have stayed home and you could have watched online and you could have stayed in your pajamas and stayed in bed and none of us would have thought anything of it and we would have probably encouraged that and supported that. And the fact that you came out on this day of all days knowing what it was, it was a very brave thing for you to do. Because in your life, motherhood didn't quite turn out as you thought it was going to. Either because of loss or either because of your current situation with your children or because it just hasn't happened yet. One way or another, because things didn't go as planned or they're not going as planned in this era of your life, you're still waiting on your child. You're waiting to meet them in heaven. You're waiting for them to come home. You're waiting to be able to have children. And so thank you for coming this morning and pushing through and being brave and coming to the house of the Lord this morning. Our heart today is that it wouldn't be a day of sadness for you or for anyone in this room, but a day of possibilities and a day of hope, truly for everyone, because the God that we're here to worship and listen for is no respecter of persons when it comes to his hope and his purposes and his plans and his love for you. And so he doesn't love some in this room more than he loves others. And so I pray that you would feel him lavishing his love on you this morning. And I pray that you already did during worship, because that was a beautiful moment in worship we got to have with the Lord this morning and one another. And so thank you, worship team, for ushering that in for us. Okay, let's go. This morning I'm going to talk from a place of motherhood, but it easily translates into parenthood. And more than that, it transcends both of those things, and it's just simply life. And so all of you men out there, wake up. Don't go into your nothing box just because it's Mother's Day and just because there's a woman up here and a mother talking to mothers. This goes, this is for you as well, okay? Oh, that was not encouraging at all. Okay, just a simple okay will do. If you were my son right now, I would say, okay, mom, but I won't make you call me mom. That's weird. You can just simply say, okay, but don't go into your nothing box. Don't turn off your attention right now. Men, this is for you just as much as it is for the women around you. <gasps> Thank you. That was amazing. Let's just close up shop right now. That's all. That's all I needed. The title of my message today is Seasons of Change. Seasons of Change. And if that doesn't sum up being a mother or a parent, I don't know what does. Honestly, if I wasn't me, I could just simply say Seasons of Change. You're going to need God more than you thought. Let's pray. 
and that would be the end of it. But for better or worse, because I am me, I'm going to add a few more words to that. And you're welcome for that. Yes, I heard somebody say yes. I hope that was a good yes. Season to change. Becoming a mother, becoming a parent changes everything. I thought being pregnant changed everything. I have a friend who is still waiting for that area of her life to, to come, and I tell her, you just wait. Being pregnant changes everything. But bodies are amazing, and more or less, they kind of go back. But being a parent changes. Oh, man, they let a woman up here. She's talking about pregnant and body. I saw some of your faces right there. Yes, your body changes during pregnancy. We can talk about it later over coffee. But being a parent changes everything. Can I get an amen in the house? It changes you. You change. Your marriage changes. Your priorities change. Your kids are constantly changing. Just when you think you have it down and just when you think you, you figured them out and you have a good routine and you have a good system going, they change. And they blow everything up and you have to figure it out all over again in whatever current season they're in. Your worries, oh, teenagers. Jesus is going to come back before my boys turn into teenagers. Your worries change. Your bedtime definitely changes. I don't know how often I know my younger self is laughing at my older self because I want to go to bed before the sun is even going down. Your bedtime definitely changes when you become a parent. What your days look like change. What consumes you change. Your coffee consumption definitely changes. What you're excited for, what you care about, what you don't care about anymore. What just doesn't seem to matter anymore changes. It all changes. And that's just all in the first few years. I'm only six years into this thing, and I already know that there's so many of you looking at me right now in your frazzled, beautiful, scary parent selves saying, you just wait. <laughs> oh, now that got a response. Now I'm the scary looking one. But one of the crazy time warp things about not just parenthood, but life is how fast it goes. I think that was the number one thing Nick and I were told when we were preparing to bring a child home is hang on because it goes by fast. And like often vague life advice you get, like when you're graduating high school or college or you get married and people kind of give you these general things and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys weren't kidding. Time flies. And yet at the same time, some days feel painfully slow. You all know this saying, the days are long, but the years are short. Man, if that isn't the truth. And on my long days with my screaming toddler and my never-ending question, asking, storytelling with all the words in the world preschooler, I wonder, is this what God was talking about when he said, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day? <laughs> he had to have been preparing us for children, because we're his children. That's got to be... That's got to be what that is. But in all of this, in all of the many, many ever-changing, inevitably changing seasons, God doesn't change. God does not change. What comfort there is in that. What comfort that knowing that as things are rapidly changing around you, and some things you want them to change, and you're happy that they're changing, but that's not often the case. Often it can be a little hard, but God doesn't change. His love for you doesn't change. His purpose and his plans for you, they don't change. His grace for you doesn't change based on what kind of season you're having. His hope for you doesn't change. It's solid. Malachi 3 6 says, I, the Lord, do not change so that you are not consumed. Man, what, a, what an encouraging word from the Lord. He doesn't change so that you're not consumed by everything around you. James 1 7 says, God, He doesn't change like the shifting shadows. Man, it's hard to keep up with what's changing, it's hard to keep up with with what our world deems as right or wrong anymore, or what's become gray, or what becomes acceptable or not acceptable. It's hard. It shifts all the time, like shifting shadows. And God is saying, I'm not like that. 
you can rest in me. There is rest in me and my presence. There is a solidness when you're with me. It's not going to change. It's not going to shift. And this is the main point. So get your pens out. Get your paper out. We still take notes in church, right? Get your devices out, whatever you're typing on. This is the main point that I want to circle around this morning with you on what I kept hearing from the Lord as I was praying for and praying into this service this morning and the word that I would get to share. Seasons of change can be hard. I don't know if you knew that or not. Seasons of change can be hard. They can just be new and so different and so unknown and often unplanned for or unexpected. But in seasons of change, you can trust God's goodness for you still. Seasons are always going to change, whether you want it to or not, whether you're preparing for it or not, whether you expect it or not, whether it's good or whether it's bad. But you can trust God's goodness for you still in this season that you're in, this very season that's happening all around you, the shifting of it, the adjusting, the transition, the growing pains of entering into a new season God has good things for you still in this season. It reminds me of the verse in Psalms where it says, his goodness and his mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Man, isn't that true? Now, for some of you, his goodness and his mercy has to run a little faster to keep up with where you're going because you're trying to dodge it or you're trying to still control it. Is there anybody in the room who'd be brave enough to admit you still think you're in control of this thing? I'll admit it, I think I'm in control of my kids. And then they remind me I'm not, daily, all the time, with a slice of humility, each and every day. But his goodness and his mercy will follow you all the days of your life. It doesn't matter what season, it doesn't matter if it's good, it doesn't matter if it's confusing, it doesn't matter if you know what's going on. He's throwing his goodness and his mercy after you because his goodness for you in this season doesn't change. So I'm going to take us to Matthew 28 for today's scripture, if you want to flip there. Right after the resurrection, talk about a season of change. Things were getting ready to change for these disciples, for these believers. And things weren't going to quite look like the way that they were used to. Matthew 28, verse 5 is where we're going to pick up. You know the story. There's a small group of women, including Mary Magdalene and Mary Jesus' mother, And they're going to tend to Jesus' dead body at the tomb early that morning on the third day. Or so they thought that's what they were going to go do. If you've been with us at all on Wednesday morning Bible study for women's ministry, Wednesday mornings, 10 a.m. in the lobby, come join us. It's amazing. I'll see you there with a cup of coffee. You may have heard some of what you're going to hear this morning. This is how long God's been talking to me about this, and I, and I couldn't hold it in when it was around Easter. And so this might sound a little bit familiar to you, and that's, that's good. That means you were listening then. So these group of women, they were met by an angel of the Lord who was sitting on the stone that was at the entrance of the now open tomb, right? The now empty tomb. So let's pick up in verse 5, Matthew 28. It says, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen, just as he had said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. The first thing these group of women were told, as often they are told in the Bible whenever somebody encounters an angel, is what? Don't be afraid. Now, there's probably a couple of reasons for that. First, the obvious, because angels we gather are very large beings. They don't look like us, so it can be a little intimidating. It can be a little scary. But I want to challenge your thinking this morning to look further into, don't be afraid. And it has nothing to do 
with the angel that was there. I had nothing to do with the message, with the messenger that they were talking to. Don't be afraid because there's change that's happening. This thing that you came to tend to isn't a thing anymore. It's changed. The circumstances have changed. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of this current change that you have stumbled on that is here now and that is yet to come. Don't be afraid of the new. Don't be afraid of the different. Don't be afraid of these changing seasons. Don't be afraid of what God is doing now. This is where remembering comes in handy. When there's change all around you, when there's seasons changing, when you find yourself in the middle of a season that has completely changed and it's being ushered in and there's nothing you can do about it, it's happening for better or worse, whether you want it or not, remember the character of God. Remember his character. Remember his goodness for you in past seasons. Because what did we say just a minute ago? That his goodness in this season, he still has for you. He has goodness for you still. So remember, just like David did so many times in the book of Psalms, he would recount, he would recall the character of God and what God did for him. Remember his love for you. Remember who he was for you and let that bring you comfort because God is not changing. Let that bring you comfort in the change. The thing about the change of seasons or a change of seasons is that more times or not, we know they're coming, right? I mean, yes, some of us like to stick our head in the sand and, and pretend it's not happening. That works really good. I highly recommend it. But the thing about a change of seasons is we know they're coming because change, like it or not, is inevitable. We all know it. We see it all around us. The seasons, the physical seasons outside are a constant reminder of that, right? Especially in our beautiful area where we actually get four seasons during the year. The flowers start to bloom. The flowers start to die. The leaves start changing color. They start to fall. They start to grow back. We see it happening all around us. These little gray hairs that keep poking up, despite my best efforts of tweezering them off of my hair, it's a reminder that change is coming. Our children getting older. Change is all around us. It's always there. And more, than, more often than not, I think we can feel it when God's getting ready to usher it in. The Bible talks about as deep calls out to deep. We can feel a stirring. We can feel something getting ready to change. Have you ever felt that? The birth of a baby, the loss of a grandparent, a wedding, a high school graduation, a college graduation, a first-time job, retirement, a friend moving away, a new family moving in. Change can be also very exciting. And it can be welcomed and expected and prepared for and you plan for it and it can be fun. Not all change is bad or hard, but change can be hard. And not necessarily because it's bad. It's just different. It's just new. It's unknown. You haven't been there before. And it can make you miss, see, it can make you miss what was when something changes. Somebody moves away and somebody moves in into their place, new neighbors where your old neighbors used to be that you had dinner with every night, a new coworker moving in because somebody got promoted and moved somewhere else, a grandparent or a parent or a friend lost their life and a new baby is born. And so while we celebrate the new life, there's still something about the old. It can make you miss what was, what used to be how things used to be, the good old days, if you will. The other day, Zane and I were in the car, and we were driving, 
And we were just about to pull into the parking lot, and he throws me this big question, which isn't abnormal at all. He's always throwing questions. He's six years old. He has nothing but questions. His questions have questions. His questions have questions that have questions. And so we start to pull into the parking lot, and we're getting to where we need to be. And he says, Mom, can kids have girlfriends, or is that just for grown-ups? <laughs> and, and what is a girlfriend? And how does that work, and, and how do you get one, and, and what do you do? <laughs> okay, first of all, son, whatever little girls you've been playing with, you don't get to play with them anymore. Because <laughs> that's little girl play. Little girls play family and dress up, and I'm going to marry this person. And little boys, son, all you need to care about is how fascinated you are with bodily noises and superheroes. That's where you're at in life right now. And that's enough. And that's amazing. And in fact, you don't need anything else the whole rest of your life. Those two things will entertain you the rest of your life. <laughs> that got the laugh out of men because you're still laughing at bodily noises. <laughs> and so it, it's funny. And we all laugh and we're all, you just proved my point. We all laugh because we're like, oh, he's starting to notice girls. That's so cute and funny and awkward. And, and I remember when I was like that or when my son was like that or, or whatever the case is. And so we all laugh. But it's such a reminder that things aren't going to be like this forever. That he's not always going to be young and innocent and unknowing. And that he'll always come to my, my husband and I, his father and myself, with these questions and being completely dependent and reliant on us, one day, he won't ask me these questions. He'll go to somebody else. And I'd appreciate it if you redirected him back to me. <laughs> our family, our little family of four with these two little young boys that you see running around here constantly, we won't always look like this. It won't always be like this. It won't be like this forever. Our children will become adults one day with families of their own, or so I'm told they'll become adults. I'm still praying for the Lord to come back before that happens. And they'll move out and they'll start young families, and, and that's a really good thing. That's what you want. That's what you pray for. That's what's supposed to happen. And yet, I find myself feeling sad about it. Man, this is such a good season. They're such good kids. And Nick and I, we just soak it up as much as we can. And we're never impatient, and we never yell. <laughs> we completely acknowledge the blessings that they are. And that helps us keep our tempers. But I find myself already missing these days that we're currently in. And I want to hold on so tightly to them and get everything that I can out of them and not miss a single thing and not waste my energy or my efforts on being mad or yelling or impatient with them and recognize, man, it's not always going to be like this. And that's a good thing, but it's also really sad when it's so good. So let's go back to the word right after the resurrection, possibly one of the, the biggest change in seasons ever, and see how one woman did with a change of seasons. We're going to flip over to John 20 for this one. John 20 Verse 13, we're going to look at Mary Magdalene and her encounter with the Lord and how she did with this change of seasons. They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. Verse 14 says, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus yet. Verse 15, he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? He's so funny. Thinking he was a gardener, Mary said to him, Sir, if you have carried away, tell me where you put him. I will go get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. When he said her name, she recognized him. But that's a whole other message. We don't have time for that this morning. Verse 17, Jesus said, Do not hold on to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, don't hold on to me. Don't hold on to what was. Don't hold on 
to the way things were. Because things are, things have, things will be changing. It's not going to be like it was, Mary. But it's going to be good, even great. But you can't hold on to how you used to know things, to how we did life the last three years, to how we did ministry the last three years. Those were amazing days. Those were good days. But don't hold on to it, Mary. This is where our trust in the Lord has to engage. Mary knew she could trust Jesus in this season of change that was so clearly at hand because she knew him and she knew he was good. So she didn't have to be afraid, even if she didn't completely know what the season of change was going to bring. You can trust God in seasons of change because he is good. To go one, can we go one step further? Because you all know that, right? You know God is good, and so you can trust him in this season of change. But can I charge you with to go one step further? Because he is good, he wants to use seasons of change to change you, to grow you, to move you, to nudge you, to shift something that was needing shifting that couldn't happen in the old season that you just came out of. He wants to challenge you and show you that he has more for you in this season that you couldn't get out of him in the last season because it wasn't time yet and you weren't ready yet and the season wasn't ready yet and the person next to you wasn't ready yet so you had to wait in order for them to catch up as well. In this season, he has more for you. Your best days are not behind you. And if you believe in the goodness of God, you will believe that he has goodness for you still in this season. Those were good days, Mary, but don't hold on to them. Your best days are not behind you. There are still good times ahead of you. There are still good memories to be made. There are still good relationships and friendships to be made because he is still with you. God doesn't change. God hasn't gone anywhere. He is still with you. You can trust God in seasons of change. You can trust that he has goodness for you still. Not just the new convert, not just the new believer, for you. It's not going to be like it was, but it's going to be good, even great, because of Jesus. Going back to our text in Matthew 28, you'll see that the second thing the angel told the women in verse 6, the women, okay, get this. The women who were coming to tend to something that wasn't there anymore. The women who were coming to tend to something that wasn't there anymore. Something that didn't need tending to anymore. Something that was no longer a thing that needed their work or their attention or their energy or their efforts or their service. That wasn't needed anymore. Do you see what's happening here? They had prepared. They were being good stewards of what they thought was happening and the season they thought was still at hand. But that's not what was needed anymore. The second thing the angel told them was come and see. Come on, come and see. It was an invitation into the new and to the next season that was being ushered in. You think you're preparing to tend to something, and God is saying, that's not on the table anymore. That season has ended. There's something new. Come and see. Come and see. And just like God has always done, he was inviting them into this part of the story. They no longer needed to tend to what they thought they were preparing to go do. That part of the story had finished. It had ended. A season of change was coming and had come, and God extended an invitation for them to come and see it, to come and be a part of it, to still be a part of it, to come and experience the more of this season. Just because one season may be ending and new things are happening doesn't mean that he doesn't have a place or a purpose or a plan for you. 
It doesn't mean that your best days are behind you just because one season had ended. I don't know how many times I can say that for you this morning. I have been swimming in this the last two months, and I wish I could go sit down and have a cup of coffee or tea or soda or whatever you drink and look you in the eyes and ask you, what season are you in right now? Do you know that you can still trust God's goodness for you in this season still? just like you did in the last season, just like this season that had come, you're just coming out of. Just because one season may be ending doesn't mean he doesn't have a place for you in this season. Jeremiah 29, 11, it gets quoted all the time, especially this time of year with all the graduations. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future if you're under the age of 21. Right, that's how we read that so many times. Well, it's for the young people. It's for those getting ready to graduate high school or graduate college or those getting ready to get married, all these mile markers in life. Well, what about the rest of us? This is for you too. This is for you too. This is still for you. Just as much as it was for you in the last season, this is for you in this season. He's still inviting you into the story. Come and see So how did the women, going back to Matthew 28, how did all of the women respond to all of this? 28 verse 8 tells us, the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. Do you know sometimes both things can be true? Afraid yet filled with joy. Change, seasons of change can be hard, but they can also be so good if you let God lead you in them. Just like he led you in the season that you're mourning over, that you're wanting to hang so tightly onto. Just as he led you through that season, this season can be good too because of who's going to lead you. Seasons of change are needed. They're necessary. They have to happen in order for there to be growth because healthy things grow, right? Because ultimately, I want my son to grow. Ultimately, I do want him to get older and experience all these fun life things, all these blessings that we experience as we get older because of the Lord. Like, Maybe getting married one day because he's learned about girls and there's maybe a girl out there. And so that's a good thing. Ultimately, I want him to grow. I want him to flourish. That's a really good thing. And it shows a sign of health if he's growing. So how do we do it? 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us to cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. This right here is how we do it. God knows what we need in every season and every change that it brings. And he wants us to come openly and honestly to him, casting our cares, taking our cares off of us and putting them onto him. Because what I, that's what he tells us we can do. Our anxieties, our concerns, our fears, our worries, our hardships, our doubts about the change. Whatever is weighing on our minds in these seasons, whatever it may be, in whatever season, as an act of vulnerable surrender to him, we cast our anxieties on to him, saying, Lord, I still need you. I still need you in this season. I don't want to miss out. I want to come and see Because I know who you were for me in the last season. I know the testimonies I told about you. I know how I bragged on you. I know what you did for me when I didn't deserve it, when I wasn't asking for it, when I wasn't expecting it, and you did. So I need that in this season from you, Lord. I need you to remind me of who I am, of who you are for me in this season. Because we can't do it without them. You know that part too, right? Sometimes we think, oh, it's okay. Change happens. It's part of life. I got this. It's not a big deal. Okay, so let's talk about denial first. And then we can cast our anxieties onto him, 
say, God, this is even a good change. It's not bad, but it's hard. God is saying, give those things to me. Can I carry those for you? You were never meant to carry that. That's what I'm for. And instead, walk with me. And as you do, as you walk humbly with me, surrendering those things to me, I'm going to show you what I have for you in this season. And it's going to be great. Brooke, would you come back up to the piano, please, with the worship team? And and we're going to get ready for a response time. So this is the part where you start to stretch a little. Because this is the part where you engage. And I get to get out of the way. When I first moved to Grants Pass, I had come from a place where I lived my whole entire life. And that was something that I bragged about a lot. I was really proud of the fact that I was born and raised in the same town and the same house for 20 years before I moved. And, and I had roots. People knew me and I knew them and I had a place and, and it was easy. And I fell right into the plans that the Lord had for me. And when he called me to Grants Pass, it, that's a whole other story too, but it was one of the very first times in my life where he spoke to me in such a personal way. And it wasn't something obvious like move to Grants Pass because that's not like the Lord at all, right? He makes us work for it. He makes us lean in a little bit to listen and to hear. And, but either which way, it was such a personal thing that he told me that I knew this was the place he called me to. And I didn't know anybody up here. I wasn't moving to family. I wasn't moving near friends. I wasn't moving to come to school, although that's what I told my parents. Sorry, mom and dad. That never happened. (laughs) But I knew there was such a peace about it. And so I did. So I moved after 20 years. I finished high school. I finished two years of an associate's degree down in Reading. And and I moved up here. I was like, okay, Lord, what do we have? Probably a husband. Well, that took 10 years. That's what I get for thinking that. And I found myself missing my days in Red Bluff. I found myself just missing being known and knowing. I found myself just flooded with memories all the time of how things used to be and and the youth leader that I was there and the students that I got to work with there and the people that I knew there and my job there and many of my school friends had already moved away but that was my home. Nobody knew me here. They were nice. They were polite. They were inviting. They were welcoming. I got involved right away. I was doing youth ministry here. But it wasn't home. And these were all really good things. It wasn't bad. It was a good change. It needed to happen. It was a healthy thing. But it was hard. But I was too prideful to say it was hard. Because it was good, so it shouldn't be hard. And I had God, so it shouldn't be hard. Because that's how that works, right? And there was a song one night at church. Back in the days where we used to have night church. But they're coming back. And it says, Lord, when my memories take the place of you, Jesus, come. When my memories take the place of you, my memories were good memories. They weren't bad. The memories that Nick and I are going to have of our boys are going to be amazing. They're going to be sweet. They're going to be precious. They're going to be silly. They're going to be filled with all sorts of little boy bodily noises. And we're going to laugh about them, and we're also going to cry about them. They're going to be good memories. But Jesus, when my memories start to take the place of you, Lord, come. It says, I will follow you there to the place where we meet. And I'll lay down my pride as you search me again. If the Lord were to search you this morning, in the season that you find yourself, and maybe it's a good season, maybe it's an exciting season, maybe it's a new season that you've planned for and you prepared for and you knew it was coming and you've been waiting and you were counting down the days on your calendar, And maybe not. Maybe it's a hard season, full of challenges, and just different, and just new. The Lord says, will you come with me to that place where you lay down your pride? Where you surrender to me? Your worries, your doubts, your cares, the heaviness, even the good 
stuff. Do you know it's not just the bad things that need to be laid down at this altar, not just the sin that separates us from the Lord, but some good things need to be laid down too so that we can make room for what he has to usher in because he still has more. He still has good things for you in this season still. And I had to come to a place with the Lord 20 years ago when I moved here and say, Lord, man, those were good days. I would love to just relive that over and over and over and let that be my life. But I know in this season, you have goodness and mercy for me still. And I had to surrender those floods of memories that would just consume me and say, okay, Lord, I'm all in here. I trusted you enough to move. I trusted you enough to step into this season. But if I keep living in the seasons that were behind, I'm going to miss out. So my question to you this morning is, will you trust God to lead you through a new season? No, really. Will you trust him? Will you surrender what you need to surrender? Lay down your pride that says, I got this. I can handle it. Life is supposed to be hard. It's fine. Kids are supposed to grow up and move away. Loved ones do get older, and they eventually pass. It's all part of life. It's okay. I'm okay with it. It's okay that it's hard. God wants you to invite him into that space because he still wants to invite you into the story that's happening now. He has a place and purpose and plans for you now. Would you stand with me? Just to, to create a private moment between you and the Lord before the worship team leads us into a song, would you just close your eyes? If that's too distracting, you can keep them open. <laughs> but would you just close them to create the space as the Holy Spirit starts to say, we're not going to move just yet. Don't start checking out yet. Will you trust him to lead you through a new season? Trust him with your heart. Trust him with your doubts. Trust him with the timing. Man, God seems to take a long time sometimes. But his timing is perfect. It's so good. His goodness for you exists in this season too. This morning, if you're here and you find yourself in a season, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. That's the funny thing about this, is that it's not just difficult seasons or hard seasons or bad seasons because something unexpected bad happened, but in good ways, seasons can be hard. If you find yourself in a season this morning where you're like, doggone it, that connected with me. Now you're gonna make me do something about it, right? Well, yes, I am a mother, so I'm going to tell you what to do. But would you be willing enough in this, this humble surrender, this vulnerable surrender to the Lord of saying, God, I still need you. It is hard, and I hate that it's hard, but it just is. Would you just lift up your hand and say, I need a touch from the Lord in this season? I need to be reminded of his goodness for me still in this season. I'm not alone. He's not paying attention to everybody else but me. He has good things for me too. The season that just ended wasn't going to be better than the new season that we're coming into. Man, there's so many hands. My hand is right there with you. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for your humility. With your hands still lifted, I'm going to ask the worship team to lead us in a song. And if you would be so brave, if you would be willing to go one step further on this beautiful day, 
this beautiful sunny day where we get to celebrate moms. But more than that, we get to come together as a family of believers and encourage one another and say, you know what? I'm in a season two and it's causing trust in a way that for God that I haven't had to express before, that I haven't had to rely on him in this way before. This is a new season, but God doesn't change. And his goodness and his mercy is running after me. Would you make your way down to the front as we just sing and worship the Lord? And there's going to be a team of people, a prayer team. They're going to come up behind you and they're going to pray for you and pray into this season for you as well. As you come to the front and you declare, you tell yourself, I can trust God's goodness for me in this season still. Would you come this morning as we sing this before we end this morning?
I am thankful for a woman of God that brought forth such a powerful word, not just to the moms in this room, but prophetically to our church to lean into the season that God has for us. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you. The worship team is going to continue to play. We recognize today there's many special things that are happening, barbecues and get-togethers and celebration of moms, and that we want to make sure that we honor that. But let me pray a prayer of blessing over you. In lieu of that, as I'm reminded right now, 5 o'clock tonight, we usually normally have prayer. We're going to postpone that till next Sunday. Um, so don't show up tonight because we're going to be making sure we'll create space to honor, honor our moms and the, the people that have meant so much in our life. But let me pray a prayer of blessing over you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. And we say yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Father, new seasons oftentimes come with being uncomfortable. They come as seasons of stretching. But Father, we thank you that you're the God that's in the next. And so Father, we're thankful that we're chasing after you. There's an invitation to, to do the things that you've called us to do in this upcoming season. And so Father, we say yes to your will and your way. And Father, we thank you for the gentleness and the peace that we feel in this room. We pray a prayer of blessing over our people today. Prayer of blessing over every family. Get together this afternoon. Let it be rich with conversation and with love. And we pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says, this pastor loves you. We'll see you next Sunday.